B'Shem Hashem Na'asa V'Nasliach Welcome everyone to our weekly shiur on the parasha with the perush of the Zera Shimshon We are Be'ezrat Hashem going to do parashat Mesora This derush is derush Vav, the sixth derush of the Zera Shimshon Before we go any further, first of all, thank you all for joining us every single week Packing this room up, Baruch Hashem uh, To more and more, to go Mechayel El Chayel The shiur is dedicated for all the singles, like the Zera Shimshon says Leilu Nishmat the Zera Shimshon first of all and like his promise says for all the singles that want to get married, Bezrat Hashem, they should find their Beshert, their Zivug, Hagun, Bekarob, Vizmano, Amen, Keni, Ratzon. I want to thank everyone that watches online, whether it's YouTube um, or TorahAnyTime.com. Please follow me because it gives me a warm feeling when people follow me on the web. <laughs> it makes me happy. I have to say something different every time. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Our weekly sponsors for the Shi'or, really thank you so much. This Shi'or has been sponsored anonymously um, um, for Shalom in Eretz Israel and all blessings and a kosher and peaceful and happy Pesach for Kol Am Israel. Um, also, it's been sponsored for the Refu'ah Shalema of Devorah Bat Fariba, Natan Ben Devorah, and Tinoket Bat. Um, Kolet Sarah, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu should give them a rufat hanefesh, rufat haguf, amen keni ratzon. Also, it's been sponsored partially by another sponsor, Rufat Shalema of Binyamin Ben Paricher, rufat hanefesh, rufat haguf, amen keni ratzon. Also, it was also sponsored partially uh, um, for my grandmother, Aleha Shalom, Batya Bat Shimon. Uh, just to let you know. What I do on an everyday basis is partially because of my grandmother, Allah Shalom. She was a powerhouse of, of just community work. She, her neshama should have an aliyah. Um, so please have her name in mind as well for the shiur. Okay, so this week's parasha deals with the nega tzara'at, the what in English has been loosely translated to sometimes as leprosy. But it's not leprosy at all. Nothing to do with leprosy. It just there was no name for it. So we're not going to call it leprosy. We're just going to we're just going to call it sarat, because that is its name. It is. It was not a physical illness. It was not a physical defect on the person's body or wherever else, as we will see. It was something of a spiritual signature, call it, a signature from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, letting the person or persons know something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. So it wasn't in any sort of way connected whatsoever to a physical um, a, 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 a sickness at all. Even though all the signs were physical, but it wasn't physical. No matter how much medication, it wasn't, it wasn't transmitted. No one could catch it, catch it from anybody else. There was no way to heal it whatsoever, except for the description in the Torah, what the Torah says. Number one was the person has to find that fault, which was usually pretty easy, as you will see. Number two, do teshuvah, never do it again, and then you would bring korbanot, and that was it. It would just go away like that. If the person was stupid enough not to do it, they would carry it for life. And that meant they had to live outside of the city in a tent, uh, separate from, they're, they're, they were not allowed to have contact with anyone, no one was allowed to have contact with them whatsoever. So, because the Torah talks about Sara'at, the Zera Shimshon discusses how, um, you'll see, how different punishments that come upon this world retributions or whatever, what they really mean. So here's what he says. Perek Yud de Pesachim, he brings from the 10th Perek of Gemara Pesachim. Tamul Pesachim. It's on page 118. So it says, Adam betovato. Praiseworthy, praiseworthy is not the praiseworthy, sorry. Um, praise to the one who collects his payment, collects his, what's due to him, meaning, punishes the person, collects retribution for the mistakes from the person, from his goods, by meaning taking the person's possessions. So we're giving thanks to the one that actually punishes a person in a sort of way. How so? 
he continues. This is the Gemara. Ashir Beshoro, the rich man, gets punished by Hashem taking his ox. Okay, as I've done many, many times, we can't relate to a person owning an ox and that being a symbol of wealth these days. A person owning an ox these days, it would be a symbol of, uh, depending where you live. If you're in the valley, it would be pretty, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. If you live in the valley, don't call me. Don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> What I was trying to say, um, watch me make this worse right now. What I was trying to say was, depends. You know, if, if you live on a farm and you own an ox, then uh, you're, you're, you're okay, whatever. If you're in the city and you walk around with an ox, um, you probably belong in, in a closed area. Anyway, so today's day and age, to kind of compare what the, what the Gemara is talking about, Ashir Beshoro, the rich man to his ox, meaning a Lamborghini. Okay, a rich man's got that ox, Lamborghini. Rich man gets, so to speak, punished somehow for their mistakes by getting a large scratch on their Lamborghini or whatever it is. Ani beseyo, and the poor person by taking his sheep. It's less. It's a, it's a uh, I don't know, call it whatever car you want. A Pinto. Uh, you know, the Pinto loses the last mirror it had standing. Remember, I think back in Iran, like, was that car, Peugeot? Pecon. Pecon. Was it, remember the, not the Peugeot, not the Peugeot, uh, the, what was that called? Gian. Do you remember Gian? Yeah. Dude. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Iranian brand. I don't even know what kind of brand. I don't even think it had a brand. No, I think it's French. That's it's French and Russian. <laughs> yeah? I think it was a very good car. Now it's a classic. Nada was Russian, yeah. <clears throat> French. Nada. So, Ani Beseyo, and the poor person would, be, would, would get punished by, you know, by, by losing his sheep. And then it goes on by saying the orphans, chas v'shalom, they're taking, by mis losing their eggs, meaning eggs from their chickens, which is what they live on. And chas v'shalom, a widow by taking her hen, meaning a chicken that lays eggs for the, it's her, it's her livelihood. So meaning, saying, Hodul Hashem, praise to, the, praise to the one that knows what to take from whom and why. Uferesh Rashbam, the Rashbam explains, This praise is basically saying that when Hashem does these things, like you're thinking to yourself, are we, we're, we're praising God for taking these things away from people? Or maybe if it would have just said the rich person losing the Lamborghini, no one would say two words. Like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. why? But, the, the, the Adani, the, the, the poor person, or the orphans, or the widow, like, wh why? So he says, the Rashbam explains, you should know this, bus, this, this passage in the Gemara is saying, this is for the person's own good that Hashem does this. Always. Meaning, and what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do? He's taking from the goods that he himself has blessed that person with, such as the Lamborghini or the Pinto or the other possessions by taking, the, taking them away. So he says, Ayn Sham, you want more explanation? Go to that Gemara and look there. So, now, the famous words that are used in the Zera Shimshon, Kashe, this is difficult to understand. It's difficult, this needs explanation. <clears throat> Why? Because the goods, the, the, the things that Hashem Himself has given, um, are very limited. They're, they're monetary possessions that the Torah, is, that the Gemara is talking about. <laughs> For even if Hakadosh Baruch Hu would not collect his, so to speak, debt from him by taking monetary possessions like the Lamborghini or whatever. Instead, he would collect it from the person's body by, God forbid, sicknesses and severe illnesses. God forbid. Barminan. Im kolze nikram, this would still be called, with all of that said, it would still be called batova shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It would still be God collecting from the goods that He has given. Meaning, the only goods that God gives a person is not just the car and the house or whatever. 
person's health. Person's body is also the same thing. And in that sense, you would still need to say, Hodul Hashem. It's not like you wouldn't say Hodul Hashem. Hashem knows what he's taking. So, but it, it turns out as if we're not doing that. God is the one who gives life and sustenance to everybody. Shapir, it would have been more fitting to say, just say, praise given to the person the to the one who collects his debt from the person from his goods. Referring to everything. Health, wealth, everything. Because that in that sense you're saying that Hashem collects from the same goods that he's given. He, it's all Hashem's possessions. Everything we have is Hashem's possessions. Not just the car and the bike or whatever, it is, everything. So just simply say, God collects from the same things he's given. Everything, whatever it is. We have no proof to say that How, why is it that basically the Gemara is saying, no, the proof is that how do we know that he deals exclusively with monetary possessions? Why, basically, why does the Gemara say, say that it does? Meaning, the Gemara brings this pasuk and says, you know, this pasuk, is, uh, this, what we're saying is Hashem takes from a person's possessions and we give praise to Him for that. How do we know? How do we know that that's what it's discussing? Because at the end of the day, Hashem gives us everything, other things also. So you're just basically asking a question on the, uh, on, on, on the formation of the way the Gemara is bringing this out. <clears throat> now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes. The Yesh Lomar. Now he's going to start like giving us uh, uh, um, like in ranks what goods HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us. There are three kinds of goods that a person has in this world. Three kinds of good things. Number one is health. Chaim. Life. In order. Chaim. His life. Uvriyut haguf. Health. You know, well-being, physical health. Vahamamon. And the person's parnasa and money. Money is good. Money is needed. Whoever tells you money is bad, they're lying to you. What a person does with money sometimes is bad. Money itself is, is a, the way a person can live. You need food. You need clothes. You need Money is good for a person. You just have to know how to use it. People that abuse money make money bad. So these are the three gifts that HaKadosh Baruch Hu in, in order gives a person. Chaim is life. Like being alive. Like being alive. Okay, like breathing. Okay. Right? And then, Briyut HaGuf is health. Good health. Good health. Not just life, but notice how that's the ranks, right? Life is first. Briyut is not first. Health is not first. Meaning life is the most important thing even, God forbid, if the person's, God forbid, not having the best of life, everybody wants to live. So in a vegetative stage. Everybody to. wants to live. <laughs> there is no one, there is no one, God forbid, even in a hospital bed, that will really mean it when they say they want to go. Yeah. Everybody wants to live. Everyone wants to live. And this goes for all those lunatics in the hospitals that feel they know what quality of life should be like. So they keep pulling the plug on different people, different ages, because they believe uh, if they, uh, they might, they're not going to have quality of life. So they do atrocious things to people because they feel that, 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 that they know, right? Little do they know that if you would ask that neshama what the neshama wants, the answer would be completely different. But we'll leave that discussion for another time. So he says, 
החיים הם חשובים מכולם. Life is the most important of all. והממון גרוע מכולם. Money is the last on the list. It's the least important of them all. You have life, health, wealth. וכל זהו לגבי בני אדם. Now all of this is true from a person's point of view. The way we perceive life from our point of view, we see life, health, success, monetary success. Amnam legabe akadosh baruchu. Listen to this concept. It's a wow concept, right? You might need to just sit there for a minute and just try to understand this concept. Legabe akadosh baruchu. When it comes to the way God sees things from His viewpoint. כל הטובות הן שוות. All good is all the same. They are all equal. When a Kadosh Baruch Hu gives good, all of them in his, the way he perceives it, they're all the same. Life is just good as the mamon, the money. Health is just good as life. Uh, 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 all the other things are just good as, ever, because it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu's giving. Can you put a value on something you just received from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Can you say one is better than the other? It's a part of Hashem. If Hashem gives you a cup, it's, 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 it's a part of God, whether it's a cup or a Lamborghini. You would treasure both. So, for us on earth, we can't. Because at the end of the day, hey, the Lamborghini gets me to, from point A to B in style. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cup, thank you so much, I drink in style. But, because, because why? Because we're so earthly. Because we're human beings, that's how we think. We're, we're, we're not that as deep. But in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's realm, realm, they're all the same. It's Kedusha all over. Kol HaTavot right? Hen All of them are the same. All the good that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, all these benefits are all the same. Shara HaKol Nivra B'Ma'amaro Because all of it was created with the same Ma'amar of Hashem. They were all created with, all, with, with the word of Hashem. Can you say one word of Hashem is less important than the other word of Hashem? Absolutely not. Can you say one word of the Torah is more important than the other word of the Torah? Absolutely not, because it's Devar Hashem, it's the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. How could you put a price tag on one more than the other? That's why, by the way, the Rambam, when it comes to reading the Ten Commandments, the Rambam says it's Asur to stand up. That's his reason. He says, how could you stand up for the Ten Commandments and not the rest of the Torah? You're saying the Ten Commandments are more important than the rest of the Torah? You're wrong. They're not. It's all Devar Hashem. If you do that, it's as if you're saying, okay, this one was really said by God. The rest were, okay, said by God. You know? Therefore, Ashkenazim that stand up, if you go to their Bet Knesset, they're standing up, they're, they're standing the entire time. You're welcome, by the way, for being Sephardi. Okay? Because if you were in an Ashkenazi shul, the moment they would bring out the Torah, you'd be standing the whole time. So imagine if you had one of those Hazans that likes to like Hazan. Eh? You'd be there all day. <laughs> right? We Sephardim, we sit for the reading of the Torah. Oh, I'm not saying chas v'shalom. It's, it's disrespectful. Or, that's, our, that's our minhag. Right? But, but it, I guess the difference between the Sephardim and Ashkenazim in that sense is when they bring out the Torah in a Sephardi shul, watch out. You might get knocked over. You might, because like people attack because they want to kiss the Sefer Torah. You know, they're like, oh, bring it here. People like on top of the, uh, in the women's section, in the balcony, they're like, bring it up here. Just care. You know how heavy the Sephardi Sefer Torah is? The women don't know how heavy this thing is. But they keep asking. And then when, they, when you come close to the women and they throw themselves on the Sefer Torah, it's like, dude, you just added 50 pounds. The guy's like, he needs to sit, right? So... We give our kavod in a different way, you know? While the Torah is on its way to the bima, we give our kavod. So he says, for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, everything was created with the same word of God. Life, the health, monetary, everything. 
ולא הוציא זמן בבריאה זו יותר מזו. None of them, listen to this, none of these creations took any more time than the others. Can you say like on day one Hashem created, um, whatever, day two Hashem created, uh, day three Hashem created, okay. Day one when Hashem created this and that, it took about six hours and seven, you know, th th six and a half hours. But when God created Adam on the sixth day, it took about three hours because eh, you know, it, no, they all, it was all like that. For HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there's no like, uh, there's no effort involved, they're all the same. Right? There's no effort involved. Exactly, you don't think of these things. You don't think about it, but for Devar Hashem, the Word of God, it's instant. There's no, there's no uh, uh, work involved. It's not like Hashem, the reason why, ah, it's, it's hitting me too right now. The reason why we give value to one thing more than another is why? Because worksmanship, how much work is involved in making this thing, how much work was involved in order to be able, able to acquire this thing so it has more value for us. Right? So we perceive everything in life like that. But for Agadosh Baruch Hu, it doesn't work that way. There is no work involved in anything. There's no, he's not stressing himself out to be like, ah, oh, I gotta build a human being today. You know, it's not, he's not feeling like tired. It's all the same. It's all one value. So therefore, the, the, between life, possessions, health, they're all the same to him. From his perspective, one is not considered greater than the other. You understand what that means when we say it's not considered greater than the other? It just means there's no effort involved. They're all the same. Take for instance as an example, uh, uh, an artist that pr produces many paintings. An artist that paints many paintings. Each one is different from the other. And he'll sell each one according to its value. You know, this one, I spent this much time, this, it has this kind of color in it, it's got this art. So this one, $2,000. This one, $3,000, $50,000. Because he thinks and calculates on each and every single one of them. How much more paint did he use for this one than the other one? How much more effort did he use on this one than the other ones? And how much time he spent on one than the other? And according to this cheshbon, according to this calculation, the buyer will pay more for this one, less for that one, and so on and so forth. So from a human's perspective, each one is different, provided it has a different value for him, whether it was time or the money, whatever it is. Omnam, however, if all the paintings are the same, you basically are buying the copies, right? The painter painted one, and then they just made copies. The copies are not going to have different value in them. It's a $200 copy. It's a $10 copy, whatever it is. The original might have been some, but if the guy's doing the same exact ones, whoever's selling it or reselling it, it's the same value. Shotzi kol kach, zeman v'tseva bazom, meaning that he spent the same amount of time painting one as he did the other, and he used the same amount of pigment for each one. Eno yachol hamocher mishurat at the seller cannot raise the price of one more than the other one. They're all the same. It's the same amount of paint. <coughs> HaKadosh Baruch Hu's point of view is the same way. Everything he has created, nothing is different from the other one. None of it has any less value than the other one. You, there's a whole new point of view on the world of creation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You cannot say that, that, that in a sense, in a sense, you can't say that this animal is better than the other animal, this thing is better than, in a sense, in Akadosh Baruch Hu's point of view, Ma'asei Yadai. These are my 
These are the works of my hands. I, it, it, it's all the same. In my point of view, they're all the same to me. Now that we understand this concept, yes? Do you need recap? No. Okay. <laughs> so then why did you start with these are the ranks? There's no differentiation. Right, so we started by saying these are the ranks, but then I followed that by saying that's in our point of view. We give those ranks. For us, yes. But for Akadosh Baruch Hu, there's no ranks. It's all the same. You understand? So why were they created on different days? Why were what created on different days? So okay, so why was, why was different things created on different days? Right? HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't put any more effort in one thing than the other. No. The reason why they were created on different days was to give us the perspective of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects of us. If human beings were created on the same day as animals, like some animals believe to be true, okay? Therefore, they would be right to act like animals. Because at the end of the day, they were created with the animals. Or in fact, they were not even created with the animals. They came from the animal, right? So when they go ahead and act like the animal, you gotta give them credit. Like, good for you. You are exactly acting like your grandpa, right? But for our perspective, that's in our perspective. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give us the correct perspective. When we know that we were created last after the animals, we have to be able to say, hold on, let me see. What, the, what does the pre precision, what does the uh, order of creation mean for me? Let's see. Hashem first created inanimate objects. Then He created trees, life force. Then he created animate beings, animals, the animals. Then on the last day, he created the human beings. You see how it's going up, right? Inanimate to vegetation has some kind. And then human. So it, it, it gives us a perception of, wow, I'm supposed to be better than the animals. Because it's like God was perfecting the world each day in its own sense, in our point of view. Right? And then the women were clear at that. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> <coughs> 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 yeah, thanks. Well, I'm just tired of just giving it to How much more do we have to let women know that they're better than us? To get past it, to get to know, okay, you're better. <laughs> All right. Yes, women were the last creation. Happy. <laughs> But they're thieves. They took a rib. They took a rib. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> All right. We were learning Torah, by the way. Let's 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 go back to it. Vehine, haadam hachoten nikrak momazik. Oh, listen to this concept. It's wowy. When a person sins. A person that does Averot is considered like a damager. Okay, let's, let's get this concept, okay? There's a Gemara that, like, there's a Gemara called Baba Kama, there's a Gemara called Baba Metziah, but mostly Baba Kama. Baba Kama is a Gemara that deals with damages. If you're, if you're um, like, planning to become a, like, a lawyer, especially, like, injury lawyer or whatever, you need this Gemara, okay? It'll sharpen your mind to understand situations, understand the human psyche, how a person thinks, what is considered damage, what is not considered a damage. And by the way, the Gemara starts off by, you know, talking about an ox goring someone. So again, the Lamborghini, eh? eh. So it, <laughs> it talks about different damages, a person's ox hits a person's sheep, or da that's all the Gemara talks about. So now, there's payment for damage. There's always payment. A person that damages someone's uh, um, 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 property, they have to get the value of that property, then the person has to pay the value of that property with their own property or payment from there. There's a lot of details that are involved in it, a lot. So he says, when a person 
Chas Shalom does an Avera, he is considered a damager, a damager. He's a mazik. It's called a mazik, mazik in the Gemara. Why? Because the person that does an Avera, they are damaging HaKadosh Baruch Hu's world with that Avera. When we sin, we don't know, but we are causing damage in the world. God created the world with a certain rule, with a certain natural law and order. There's a spiritual world behind our world. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us to do the mitzvot and not do the averot, it wasn't just for our own good. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, listen, this is, this is how I created the world. If you do this and that, you're actually hurting everything. If you eat on Yom Kippur, you're not being punished because, ah, I told you not to do it and you're doing it and I, <laughs> I'm going to punish you now. No, you've actually damaged the world. Because according to your law that I gave you, you should not have eaten on Yom Kippur. Somebody else has different laws because they live in different realms. So when they live in that different realm, like the Umot Olam, the rest of the nations of the world, when they're living in the other realms, that law doesn't apply in those other realms. So when they do that in the other realms, they're not damaging anything. In fact, if they do the mitzvot in your realm, they're damaging the world because that's not in their realm. You have to stick in your realm. When you keep Shabbat in this realm, you are repairing the damage. When you are mechalel Shabbat, you're damaging the world. So in, 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 in a nutshell, the punishments and retributions that come in the world are not because God is angry. We say that metaphorically because we want to basically put, a, uh, put it into perspective in our view. But no, it's basically, it's, 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 it's the nature of the world. Hashem says, listen, this damage you've caused has to be fixed. And here's the fix to it, unfortunately. That's what it is. So he says, when a person does an avera, he's damaging the world. Malan, and we have a law, we have a rule. And we have a rule If the damager party has different, sorry, if the, yes, the damager party has different plots of land. Okay, so the way the Gemara talks about paying off damages is that, okay, so uh, uh, the damage is so and so much, you don't have, okay, so the person has real estate. Everybody had pieces of land those days. So the damage had to be paid according to the value of their land. Okay. Wow. What? Like, like collateral. Not just like collateral, it was payment. It was payment, as payment. You can't pay cash, land, right? So now. Wait, was it proportion to how much they owned? Like a person who owned a one acre land versus a two acre? The two acre guy would Those questions land? actually are the topic of what we're gonna talk about, but they're, they're vast. Okay. What quality of land? What quality of land do you pay from? Let's say you have two different qualities. Do you pay from the lesser quality more? Or no, you have to pay from the good quality land, even though you'd rather pay. So listen to what the Gemara says. Listen. Hanizakin shamin lahem be'edit. We assess the damager's payment from the superior land of the person that needs to pay. Even if he has less superior land, no doing. You have to pay from your superior land. And that's in Gitin, by the way. Gemara Gitin. Ve'im ken. And if so, a sinner of the of Avera, a person that does an Avera and, and, and who damages certain things in the world, should also pay from the quality. You understand? <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. Should pay from the best quality of the land or of the possession. Which would be what? Hayalo lamut chas shalom. When a person does an avera, it's severe. He just damaged God's world. So just like our rule book says, you need to collect from the best of the person's property. Hakadosh Baruch Hu should also have the uh, 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 um, the right to go ahead and collect from the best of what we deem as the best of the property. Which is life. life. Huh? Life. life. Chaim. 
And that would be in order to erase the sins and pay for those sins. But that's if the guy doesn't have anything else, right? No. 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 So even if the guy has money for the damages? Because those days, so land was your possession. And there's different things you could pay with money. But mainly it's land. You have to look up, you have to learn the Gemaras. I advise all men to learn Gemara on a daily basis. I mean, it'll open your minds to like, uh, you will understand. You, if you want to really see that the Torah is true, you need Gemara. You, you need Gemara because you will see the vast knowledge the Torah has through the Chachamim. You can't say it's made up. It just, it, it's just impossible. It's just perfection, like you have no idea. It, it'll make you think of things no one ever thought about. Like the, the way a payment is just collected is unbelievable, you know. So it says, Uifrat. This is especially true that a person should pay with the superior, the better of his qualities, meaning with life. Because in the Gemara, we actually pasken halacha according to Rabbi Akiva, divimazik shayminan, that we assess the damage payments from the damager's plot of land. And we paskin according to him. So if we, if we go according to the law, according to Rabbi Akiva, we kind of made things difficult in, in a way for ourselves, right? I want to tell you why that is so. There's a concept that we say, God has given us the Torah, okay? The Torah has given, been given to humans, to the Jewish people. When Hashem gave the Torah to Jewish people, he gave the rule book to us and also the rules, meaning, meaning. This is a very, very deep and difficult concept. However, I'll give you an example, okay? The Gemara has a discussion between two Chachamim. Once, and it was, the discussion was about dates. Not, not dates that you eat khurma with your chai. I'm talking about dates on a calendar. And one, one of them would say that um, the first day of Nisan is on Thursday. The other one would say the first day of Nisan is on Tuesday. That's a big deal. Because one day here and there, you kind of throw the calendar completely off. When is Rosh Hashanah? When is Yom Kippur? When is Pesach? When is Sukkot? When does it all start? Like, so one held, basically, that Yom Kippur, let's say, one of them held that Yom Kippur is this Tuesday. The other one held that Yom Kippur is the Thursday, two days afterwards. And they had this argument. One of them had more authority. The one that said it's on Thursday. What does he do? He tells the other Rav, on Tuesday... I want you to come to my house with your cane. Meaning, I want you to carry outside on your Yom Kippur to prove to you that it's not Yom Kippur. Now imagine, this is a, one of the Tanaim that sets halacha. And he's saying, I believe it's Yom Kippur. <laughs> what did he do? He actually did it. He actually walked to his home on Yom Kippur to say, why? Because we pass in halakha according to the authorities that halakha is based on. Which goes according to many factors, which one of them is rov, meaning um, 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 the majority. So if the majority says this is the date, it's the date. And he had to listen to his rov. So okay, you're saying this is the date, my calculations are wrong, even though I, I'm 100% sure my calculation is correct. What if now? What if Yom Kippur was on Tuesday? Would, would everybody have done an Avera by going on Thursday? Absolutely not. And this is that beautiful concept. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I've given you the Torah and all of his concepts. I've given you the information to be able to, from the moon and the sun and the stars, tell when is Rosh Chodesh, when is Nisan, when is it? And you, with the best of your ability, according to the rules, According, once again, according to the rules that I've given you, the equations that I've given you to the best of your ability, decide when is Pesach, when is Yom Kippur, and you do that. Now if I, me, Hashem, in Shamayim, 
Know that you're wrong. And Yom Kippur is a month, two days away, or two days before. But you, according to all the equations, you've tried and you've seen it, you've seen the moon, the way it's set, and you've decided it's on Thursday. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, so be it. Yom Kippur is on Thursday. Which means, we decide halacha. Do you understand that? Meaning Hashem says, Yom Kippur is on Tuesday. Imagine, Yom Kippur is on Tuesday. I'm excited for Am Yisrael to come pray to me. And then all of a sudden, they go out and to the desert. That's how they used to uh, set the calendars. They would go to the desert and they would see the moon, where the position is. They would come back to Betin and go, we saw the moon. It was Rosh Chodesh Nisan is on this date. So six months later, it's going to be Yom Kippur. Right? So Hashem says, okay, I'm excited to see everybody on Tuesday for Yom Kippur, according to the calendar that, you know, I created. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, uh, I, I guess I'll see everybody on Thursday. I'll give you an exa another example. There is a ma'aseh in the, in the Gemara, just to prove this point, between Rabbi Al-Azhar um, uh, and the Chachamim, about a, a, an oven. They were discussing whether this kind of an oven is, uh, uh, if it becomes tameh in a certain way, impure in a certain way, is it impure or is it not? The Chachamim said one way and he said another way. Now Chachamim means majority, okay, few, and he was one. However, he, according to many, he had the right idea. And he tried proving it to them, but they didn't understand. They, they, they're like, uh, we're not following. Who was the rabbi? Rabbi Al-Azhar. Right? We say Rabbi Al-Azhar in the Haggadah, right? We're going to say it in a few, <laughs> in a few days. <laughs> so, so, so Rabbi Al-Azhar is arguing with them and they're standing outside. So Rabbi Al-Azhar can't, can't, can't go any further. He can't prove it. He's trying. He's trying everything. They're like, no, we don't see it. We don't see what you're seeing. So he says, okay, if I'm right, the river should prove it. And the river was going this way and it starts going backwards. Right? The Chachamim say, we don't pass Ken Halacha according to rivers. He goes, if I'm right, this tree should move. And the tree uproots itself and it starts walking feet and feet away and roots itself in again. They go, we don't bring halakha from a tree. This is a Gemara. It's not, it's not a fairy tale. It's a Gemara. And there's a reason why these examples were used. You have to go to that Gemara. Right? So he says, if I'm right, the walls of the Beit Midrash should, should prove it. And the walls begin to crumble and they start coming down. And the Chachamim, they see that it's about to come down on the Beit Midrash. And, and they go, stop. And he goes... Enough, you know, like people are like, you're going to kill everybody. It's like, but fine. So you know what? If I'm right, th there should come a heavenly voice that says I'm right. Do you need more than that? Do you need more than that? Come on, you don't need more than that. Heavenly voice comes and says, Halakha is right, Rabbi Al-Azhar. You know what the Chachamim say? Three words. Three, <laughs> Three words. They say, Lo bashamayim hi. The Torah is not in the heavens. The Torah is here. We decide halakha. They don't decide the halakha. Do you understand? Do you understand? They said, the Torah has been given to us with its rule book and all the rules of how to, stifer, how to cipher the codes. We need to be able to see how to cipher that code to say that halakha is like, we don't see it. So if Hashem wanted us to see it, we would see it. Now they can till next Wednesday say halakha is like you. If you can't see it, the majority rules. The majority sees it this way. We're not going to go by every heebie-jeebie that comes out and says, ah, no, we're not. The story has a continuation. It says the Chachamim saw Eliyahu Hanavi. One of the Chachamim saw Eliyahu Hanavi the next week. It said to him, I want to know what happened in Shamayim during the time when Eliyahu, when, when Al-Azhar, Rabbi Al-Azhar and the Chachamim argued and Rabbi Al-Azhar, and then, and then they said, Lo ba Shamayim, it's not in the heavens. And then he says, Hashkadosh Baruch Hu laughed. And he says, Banai, my children, you've beat me in my own game. You got it. That's my rule. That's a rule I set. Halakha kerabim. I set the rule that there were majority rules. I can't come and change the rule now because of Rabbi Lazar. I can't. So it, so it shall be. Even though I believe this, 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 this oven is tahor. Now I have to say it's tameh. That's why it's so important for every person to have a Rav. 
Because sometimes you will go to a rabbi and a rabbi will tell you, you'll ask, Rabbi, can I do this? Can I do that? And the rabbi that knows you, let's say, whatever, says, no, it's, it's, it's Asur. Right? You'll go to another Rav, just that, and the Rav says, nah, it's Mutar, go ahead. You're going to be in trouble. Because Halakha was paskined for you that way if that person's your Rav. You can't just change and be like, ah, for this one, I follow this one. <laughs> when it comes to Pesach, I'm a Sephardi. <laughs> right? When it comes to Rosh Hashanah and Selichot, I'm Ashkenaz. Four days of Selichot only. Hatati, Aviti, Pashati. Shalom Ali Israel. 40 days, Kiho Seledera. Come on, please. 40 days, bro. <laughs> right? By the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ashkenazim have a very funny joke. They say, you know why Sephardim have 40 days of slichot? Because they eat rice on Pesach. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the joke is on them. It's on them. Because we're praying for them for 40 days. <laughs> it's all a joke. It's all a joke. Okay. So he says, so, so that's the concept. That the... the, the, the we basically, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us the key to the Torah and Halakha. And, and, and obviously we can't make those Halakhot anymore because we don't have the Sanhedrin. We don't, we don't get to like pick and choose. Oh, I see the Torah this way. So nah, ha no, it doesn't. Right? But you have to understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us a lot of power. We have a lot of power. We were, we, we were given the power to decide holidays. You had to go and see the moon and come back. And if you made a mistake, you were two days off, you were way off. Like Rosh Hashanah, Pesach, Yom Kippur, it would all be off. But what would really happen? In the Shamaim, the dates of everything would change. That's what would happen. It would, to him, it would be like, I guess 14th of Nisan now is on the 17th of Nisan. All right. No, this is what, how my children have ruled. So therefore... We go, according, now we're saying, we go according to Rabbi Akiva. We pass in Allah according to Rabbi Akiva, which is what? Which is what? Which is, we're saying, Rabbi Akiva says, you collect from the best of the damager's land. So we're in trouble. If Rabbi Akiva passes this way, and we pass in according to Rabbi Akiva, who else passes according to Rabbi Akiva? Hashem. That's the, we made the rules. So what do we say? Listen to what the Zerah Shimshon says. Ve'im kol zeh. With all of that, the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu would legally be able to require from a person and, and take chas v'shalom, the best of what we deem to be best. HaKadosh Baruch Hu letovatenu, that's what the, we said the Gemara says, for our own good, choshesh lisvarat rabish Yishmael. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, ah, there's a safek here, there's a question, maybe Rabbi Ishmael is right. That's the other Tana that argues with Rabbi Akiva in the Gemara and says, no, we take from the least of the, not from the best of the crop, from the land, from the lowest of the land. So it says Hashem, for this instance, for our own good, goes according to Rabbi Ishmael, the Kamar Divinizak Shaiminan, who says, you know what? We assess the payment from the damaged party's goods plot of land, not from the damager, from the damaged. Meaning, we take the payment, we assess how much payment we need to give the damaged party according to the damaged party's land. Which means what? According to our sechel. Hashem says, what's important to you? In your eyes, what's the most important? You value all your possessions and your big house. And when was the last time you thought about life? We, we get up every single... Right? right? We don't think that, ah, I have life. Right? We have life. And then, uh, 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 and there's a scratch on the car. you what did you do to my car? It's like we have so much emotion when it comes to the car. When we wake up in the morning, it should be like, unless your wife is next to you and you're like, calm down. You know? But... But really, Modani should be Modani lefanecha melech. You know? But we don't. After we use the restroom, the miracle of being able to go to the bathroom. It's a miracle. And we have a bracha thanking Kakadosh Baruch Hu for the pipelines and the arteries and the heart and everything. Right? People walk around, 
They come out of the bathroom, they wash their hands. Right? Right? We don't really like, we, we're, not, we're not, you know what I'm saying? We don't pay attention to those things. Hashem says, I'll go with the best of your plot of land. Meaning, what you perceive to be the greatest possessions you have. For this, only for this time. That's why the Gemara says, Letovatenu. For our own good, Hashem says, okay, I'll decide according to what you see as the best in your life. It's the car and the house and the money and the this. Hashem says, okay, a little off here, a little off. You're, you're upset enough. You know, you, you lost two dollars over here, you're upset. Good. Job done. Right? Therefore, because in God's eyes, they're all the same. For Him, there is no levels. They're all gifts from Hashem. And they're all called superior assets. They're all called the best. That's why He's able to do that. He says, you know what? They're all the best to me. Because I gave you that car. Because I gave you that job. Because I gave you that house. I gave you the life. I gave you the health. They're all from me. So there's not, you can't say one's better than the other. In my perspective, they're all me. They're all a part of me. I'm giving you me. Do you understand? From Hashem's perspective, it makes no difference. It's all gifts and it's all the same. One's not necessarily better than the other. And because of that, we give thanks, we give praise to one who takes possession of his debts from his goods, from the goods that he has given that person. So Hashem's point of view, monetary possessions are just as good as life. They're all the same. Because in Hashem's eyes, everything is considered goods that Hashem has given us. Do you it's beautiful. It's a beautiful concept. It's more beautiful because we don't think about it. We never think about it. We never, you know, it's, it's sad because life becomes so fast-paced that we tend to not pay attention to things that really matter, pay attention to things that are truly important until God forbid we realize that, oh boy, what was it that really mattered? You know what I'm saying? The car makes us upset, the little dent, the little scratch, the house, da da da, makes us so upset because we get busy with life. And then all of a sudden, God forbid, the moment, the moment, the moment, something goes, ugh. In life, chas v'shalom, bar minan, and then all of a sudden, the person would rather give the car, give the house, give everything. Right? I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Nobody. So why don't we? Because we, we're in the fast-paced life. And I'm like, hey, you gotta, you gotta, we gotta make the money, we gotta get the fame, we gotta get the, uh, we gotta be important, we gotta have gava, we have to have, be, be arrogant, we have to show off, whatever it is that's important to us, that has become more important to us. Moda'ani is, I believe really, Moda'ani is the greatest giving of thanks. The greatest, and it doesn't even have Hashem's name, because we're not pure enough to say Hashem's name yet. We just woke up. It's before Natilat Yadayim, before everything. But the moment we open our eyes, I think we should just take a second to really open our eyes. We should really take a second to really think. If we don't know the translation, take a Sidur and read the translation. And then really with all of our heart, every single morning, every single morning for the next 120 years, Bezat Hashem say, Moda'ani lefanecha. Shem, I give thanks to you. Melech chai v'kayam, you eternal king. Shechazarta bi nishmati. You've returned to me my neshama, my greatest asset. Shechazarta bi nishmati. Bechemla rabba emunatecha. You have trusted me again. 
You have trusted me once again after I screwed up yesterday, after I got angry yesterday, after I got jealous yesterday, after I did this avara, I did this, that avara, I, dis I kept destroying your world. But again, once again, you've given me life. The greatest asset for me. In my eyes, the greatest asset of all. These are the things that should be important to us. The bracha of Asher Yatsar. It is the only bracha that we have that says, Kisei Chavodecha. It's the only bracha that says, God, it is known before your throne of glory. We don't have any other bracha that says your throne of glory. We come out of the restroom and we say, Hashem, it is known before the th your th glorious throne that these pipes, my heart, my arteries, the why? Because it's such an important bracha. We are giving thanks to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for, the, for this system that works flawlessly, Bezrat Hashem, Ad Ma'avesrim, that Certain animals think happen by itself. You know, you know the animals that come from monkeys? You know this famous story of a, of a Rav that was sitting on a plane. I don't remember which Rav it was, a very famous Rav. He was sitting on a plane and constantly people came and tended to him. People of his family and stuff tended to give him a cup. You want water, you want this, you want to sleep, you want that. So someone very important was first class. People were coming from coach and asking him if he needs anything. So finally, there was another dignitary, dignified person sitting on the left. And he says, pardon me. I notice there's a lot of people coming and asking how you're doing. Da, da, da. May I ask um, who these people are? He says, they're my children, my grandchildren. He says, wow. Your children and your grandchildren give you this much attention? <laughs> he says, of course. He says, my kids won't even call me for the holidays. So what did you do? What is your secret? So he says, pardon me if I may ask, do you believe in God? He says, no, I don't. He says, I'll tell you what the problem is. He says, you see, we believe in God. And we believe that God created the entire world, Adam and Eve and everyone in it. So in our culture, who's the greatest man ever created? Adam. He was created by the handiwork of God, by God Himself. Every kid after that born is less and less and less, you know, godly. And then we got the Torah. Once we got the Torah, every generation connected to the Torah is closer to the receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. So the older you are, the more connected you are to Adam, the more connected you are to the Torah. Therefore, we cherish our elders because when you see an elder, that person is one generation closer to God <coughs> and the Torah. It says, according to your culture, you come from monkeys. The farther away you are, the more human you are. So your children look at you and they just see a bigger monkey. So why would they respect you? So we have to really ponder on that idea. It's not just a story, it really happened. We have to ponder on that. We are creation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We should really, really ponder on that idea and really thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for this wonderful life and everything that He's given, bestowed upon us. And may HaKadosh Baruch Hu bestow upon all of Am Yisrael. Chayim tovim. Osher va osher v'chavod. And it should be, Bezrat Hashem, in the zakhut of the Torah that we learned tonight, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should release all the hostages of Am Yisrael and bring them home to their families, Amen Kini Ratzon, and safeguard all the soldiers of Am Yisrael and bring them home safely to their families. And it should be a Chag Kasher V'Sameach V'Kol Am Yisrael. And this Pesach, as we say, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu redeemed us on Pesach and He will redeem us again on Pesach. This Pesach should be the Yom Tov of the final redemption, Geulah Shalema Bimhera Amen. Amen. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen ve'Amen.